So let's see if you can figure out how to solve this interesting math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. If a number is added to its square, the result is 90. What is the number or numbers? Okay, so that is the problem, but this is a multiple choice question, and the answer is one of these over here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a look at our choices. So A is 7, B is 14 and 2, C is 9 and negative 10, and D is 5 and 25. So this is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure it out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So the first thing that we need to think about is the problem. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Well, anytime you are dealing with a math word problem, always use the rule of three, which is read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Now, a lot of students, a lot of people make a mistake. They're like, oh no, Mr. YouTube math Mathman, I'm gonna read it one time, I get what's going on, and they just, they go off in one direction really fast. And what happens is, They'll start going over here, then they'll be like, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of reaching a dead end. I'm not really getting the right answer. So they'll return back to the prom, and then they read it again, and they're like, oh, wait a minute, I have a better idea. I can go this direction and get the right answer. Oh, or maybe they're like, oh, I, I didn't really understand the prom correctly. So to avoid all of that, you know, let your uh, brain kick in by really reading the prom and understanding the question, okay? So that is something that I kind of have to stress over and over again because a lot of people, you know, they just get right into the problem, right? Take your time, think about it, reflect upon it. Now, one thing here is that we need to translate all this kind of verbal stuff, these this kind of sentence, into a mathematical representation of what's going on, okay? So if a number is added to its square, so we gotta figure out what this means, and then we have over here the result is 90. Now, what we could do is say, well, we could use these uh, answers to kind of test uh, what answer actually fits what's going on here, and if you did that, that is fantastic. And if you uh, took a guess, that is great as well because never, ever, ever leave a math question blank unless you're going to get penalized for the wrong result. But in this situation, uh, you really do need to kind of uh, model what's going on. And we need to be able to, again, translate a verbal sentence into an algebraic or variable phrase. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have if a number, okay, is added to its square. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and actually construct some variables here. All right, so if a number, now let's let a variable. Now a variable in algebra is simply a symbol, oftentimes just a, uh, a letter, okay? And uh, even more commonly, a lower uh, case uh, letter. Uh, so we'll let the uh, letter N, okay, because we're talking about a number, represent this number in question, right? So if a number, so we'll call that number uh, N, is added to its square. Now, what is the square of a number? Okay, when you square, well, let me ask you, if I say here's 2 square 2, what is the square of 2? If you're saying, hey, Mr. You 2 Math Man, does that I mean take it to the second power? Well, indeed, that's exactly what it means to square something. We're going to take it to the second power. So if a number n is added okay, to its square, the result is 90. Now, this uh, word is in algebra or in mathematics is always, always the equal sign. Okay, so we can kind of build uh, some sort of equation here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and see the full thing. So let's let n equal this number. So if a number, let's just walk through the sentence nice and slow. If a number is added to its square, so if the number is n, what is the square? Okay, well, that would be n squared. So if a number is added to its square, well, here is its square, and then we're going to add the number n to its square. So that's going to be n squared plus n. 
asking, okay, n squared plus n. So I'll say that one more time. If a number is added to its square, so we gotta start with the square first, right? So n squared is that number squared, and then we're gonna add the number, and the result is 90, or that whole thing, n squared plus n, is equal to 90. Okay, so now we took that uh, verbal situation and we translated it into a lovely algebraic equation. So at this point, if you understand uh, you know, what's going on, now we need to have the math skills to solve for n. So we have n squared plus n is uh, equal to 90. So if you wanna pause the video and see if you can figure that out, that's fantastic, but I am going to figure out what n is equal to because if we can solve for n, well, indeed, we will have found that number or numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So we have n squared plus n is equal to 90. What are we dealing with here? We are dealing with a quadratic equation. All right, so uh, technically, we would call that a second degree polynomial equation, but that's just like a little bit too technical. Some of you might say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, don't get all technical on me because I already don't like math right now. Just kind of break it down in nice, simple terms. I got you. Okay, so n squared plus n is equal to 90. This is a quadratic equation, but this little two right here uh, means that there is two solutions, okay? We have two solutions. You always have two solutions when it comes to a quadratic equation. So how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, this is a big topic in and of itself, but uh, first of all, what we wanna do is uh, set this entire equation equal to zero. So we have this 90 over here, so we'll subtract 90 from both sides of the equation. I almost wrote 99. So uh, we'll subtract 90 from both sides of the equation, and now we have n squared plus n minus 90 is equal to zero. Now at this point, uh, we have this lovely quadratic trinomial. So uh, what we're gonna try to do is factor this thing, okay? So we can solve this hopefully by factoring, okay? We're gonna attempt to factor it, but if we can't factor it, we can always use our secret weapon, which is the quadratic formula to solve for n. Either way, we can get the solution, but let's hope we can factor it. Now here, uh, we can factor uh, this quadratic trinomial. Now, I'm gonna show you a lovely little technique here. I call this a case one trinomial because we have a one as a leading coefficient. So uh, what we can do is take that one, multiply it by this uh, last uh, number here, okay? This is in standard form, which is highest to lowest power. So one times negative 90 is uh, negative 90. Now we're looking for factors, okay? We will hope that we have factors of negative 90 uh, that add up to this one right here. So here is negative nine times 10, okay? These are factors of negative 90. There's other factors as well, but I'm not listing them all. Uh, I'm just kind of giving you a, a quick shortcut way to factor this trinomial. Some of you hopefully could just be like, yeah, I already know how to factor it, Mr. YouTube Math Man. That's perfectly fine. But uh, this technique is we can find factors of negative 90, and we have negative nine times 10, that is equal to negative 90. But the more important thing is that negative nine plus 10 is a positive one, which is the same as this leading coefficient, or not the leading coefficient, I'm sorry, the coefficient in front of the n uh, term, okay? So these combinations of factor factors add up to a positive one, meaning that this is, these numbers, negative nine and 10, are the factors when we kind of break this into a binomial. Okay, so the way we factor a quadratic trinomial, and this is getting real messy here real quick, so let me kind of erase this, is uh, the following. Okay, so this right here is always going to break up into a binomial. We have an n squared, so we'll end up with an n and n right here. The hard part is to figure out what goes in here and here, but guess what? We just already figured that out. It's gonna be negative nine and a positive 10, plus 10 over here and negative nine. Okay, so this is a fantastic little shortcut. Well, not shortcut, kind of like a little procedure for those of you that struggle with factoring. I'll give you some suggestions on learning more about this particular technique. But anyways, our uh, quadratic trinomial factors this way, n minus nine times n plus, ten, uh, n plus 10, excuse me, and that's equal to zero. And that is fantastic because we ha uh, can use what we call the zero product property. This thing times this thing is equal to zero. So now we can just set each of these factors equal to zero and solve. 
Okay, so let's take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just love the way I kind of sneak that in? Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, every single time you make your videos, you go on and on and on about, you know, subscribing and, you know, why people, you know, struggle in math because of their mindset. Yes, you are right, okay? I do take the time to talk about those things because it is the number one reason why people struggle in math, okay? I've been doing this for decades and decades. Matter of fact, I'll give you the top two reasons why people struggle in math. Uh, the second reason you might be shocked. Well, I'm not shocked about, but you may not have been putting enough importance on it. So the first reason people struggle in math is because they tell themselves they're not good in mathematics. I'm bad at math. Math is not my thing. Uh, I'm just not that good in math. Uh, you got to stop saying things like that to yourself. You can absolutely be great in math, but it, took, it does take time, effort, and um, you know commitment, right? And most importantly, it takes uh, great, uh, clear, and understandable, uh, comprehensive math instruction. That's how I like to teach math. So you can be great in math if you want to. It is a choice. So if you want to be great in math, just tell yourself, all right, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to be great at it. You can't be trying to understand math, but at the same time saying I'm bad at math. So change your mindset. Now, the second reason people struggle in math is because they take terrible math notes or they don't take any math notes at all. You must take great math notes, okay? If you take great math notes and you have a positive mindset and you have great math instruction, you are absolutely gonna be successful in mathematics if you don't give up. Now, if you need additional help, uh, in math, algebra, geometry, pre-calculus, whatever, check out my full main math courses. That will That's where you're going to find my best stuff to include math notes, worksheets, the whole nine yards. But uh, anyways, uh, before I move on with the rest of this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's a, It really does a lot for me to grow my YouTube channel so I can reach as many people as possible and hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. Now that we have this thing factored, n minus nine times n, pl uh, n plus 10, again, this thing times this thing is equal to zero. Okay, this is why we set uh, these quadratic trinomials equal to zero, or polynomials equal to zero, because think about it. If we have one thing being multiplied by another thing. If I said to you, hey, I have two numbers, and when I multiply them together, the answer is zero, you would say, oh, that's pretty cool. And I'm saying, well, what are the numbers? Well, you'll say, I don't know, but one of the numbers must be zero. You can't multiply two numbers together and get zero as an answer unless one or both of those numbers are zero. That is the zero product property. That's why we're gonna say, all right, this number, you are probably zero and you over here are probably uh, zero. So, you know, you need to understand why we are setting each factor equal to zero. So we're gonna set n minus nine equal to zero. We're gonna solve that. That is n is equal to 9, and then n plus 10 is equal to 0. We'll solve for n. We get n is equal to negative 10. All right, so these are the answers, but let's uh, check the, our work here and see if it makes sense. So if a number is added to its square, the result is uh, 90. Let's find the number or numbers. So we're saying that we have two numbers, 9 and negative 10. Let's go ahead and check that, uh, check these numbers and see if that is the case. All right, we'll start with negative 10. So we're going to take negative 10 and square it. And then we'll add it to uh, its uh, to itself, right? So this is the number added to its square. So negative 10 squared is what? 100 plus negative 10. Oh wow, this is working. 100 plus negative 10 is 90. That is fantastic. Let's check nine. So uh, nine, and we're going to add it to its square. So nine squared. Nine squared is 81. 81 plus nine is indeed 90. That works as well. So there you go. This is how you solve this particular algebra word problem. Now, if you figured it out by just kind of reasoning through it or you know checking the answers, that is fantastic as well. But uh, you want to use algebra, okay? Because algebra is a fantastic math tool and you can learn algebra, okay? But it does take time, effort, and commitment. And hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.